2009 first. The highlights. Legacy government begins domestication of national women economic empowerment policy. President Tinubu directs finance minister to submit templates for new minimum wage in two days. And Francine United State President announces executive action to cut migrants crossing. And in sport, five more players arrive at Super Eagles camp and at World Cup qualifier against South Africa. Now, the details. I'm Sarah Adesoya. The state government has kicked off processes for the domestication of the National Women's Economic Empowerment new policy of a pledge to localize the policy to meet the unique needs of women across the state. The National Women's Economic Empowerment Wee Policy is an initi initiative of the federal government launched in May 2023 as a blueprint to guide the country towards becoming a balanced and inclusive society. Commissioner for Women Affairs and Poverty Innovation, WAPA, Dada made the pledge of the stakeholders' engagement to allow the domestication in collaboration with the Lakers State Office and the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs. According to her, the domestication is timely as women disproportionately make up the majority of the state population at 8.5% of the extreme, extreme poverty stage, and the WAPA Ministry has made concerted progress in empowering women through diverse economic empowerment schemes. The opening remarks, special advice on SDGs, on Luafi, attributed the success of Lagos to gender equality, which is well thought out to ensure women are part of the decision making in the state and align with the themes plus agenda. Female recommended stakeholders were actively pushing for equal opportunities for women everywhere noted that the stakeholders' engagement is in line with the SDG 17, which speaks to the importance of collaboration. Earlier, lead consultant, Lagos State We, ASG, Fabia Ogumeko, set through key directions such as tailored solutions, local ownership, inclusive collaboration, and policy effectiveness. The WE policy intends to center all existing women initiatives with the aim of tracking progress. Government through the State Building Control Agency, LASCA, is inviting interested consultants in the built environment to register with relevant professional bodies to indicate interest in the State Building Certified Accreditors Program, CAP. General Manager of LASCA, Polaoki, said the state is set to engage consultants who will act as certified accreditors to complement the activities of government officials and screening of drawings, stage inspections, and monitoring activities for compliance with the Lagos State Building Control Regulations. Okay, so the program is in line with the policy of the state government of making Lagos sustainable, resilient, and attractive to businesses through fiscal planning and urban development. The State Minister of Physical Planning and Urban Development has engaged stakeholders on the formal handing and the launching of the Okorodu sub region master plan for 2016 to 2036. And as welcome address, Commissioner for Physical Planning and Urban Development, Alain Kaulumide, highlighted the challenges facing Okorodu, saying the master plan will bring massive growth and development. Lumide also informed the gathering that Governor Babaji de Sonolu has granted a 90 day amnesty on building plan approval for existing or completed structures of which there will be zero penalty fee. So the question is, you can hear what uh, we'll be discussing here, is to take it as a joint um, purpose. The plan is not only from the side of the government. If there are no people, there cannot be government. If there are no government, there will not be need for plans. Now we've had the plans. The government is ready to implement. The people on the outside should also be ready to implement so that we can all enjoy the comfort. The message to the landlord is that they should get their building plans approved. Now to the landowners, they should try and abide by the plans we have at the Events. The commissioner handed over the master plan to the Ayungura of Ikorodu, Oba Adewale Shotoli. On his part, Oba Shotoli appreciated Governor Sonu for his listing airs and good plans for Ikorodu. What we are presenting to also, what we are saying that Ikorodu appreciates this good culture. 
that they are giving us. For us not to have a master plan, for all these years, and we need to appreciate what we have done. So on behalf of the Uruguay Division, we want to thank the Governor and all the cabinet members and the team for a job well done. Director of the Master Plan Department in the Ministry, Only Salam, who provided a project brief, emphasized the urgent need to address the challenges facing Ikurudu. The event was attended by traditional rulers, including Renaldo of Inota, Opa Mudashi Ubakare, former Commissioner for Physical Planning and Urban Development, Idris Serako, former Deputy Governor, Shago Ubelewe, and other dignitaries. President Balatunubu has named the Atara Road from Northern Parkway to Alton Northern Expressway in Abuja after playwright and Nobu Lorea Wale Shoyinka. The post has ex handle the special advisor to the President on Information and Strategy, Bayo Ononuga, said the highway will now be called Professor Wale Shoyinka Highway. Tinubu on naming the road after Shoyinka will be 90 on July 13, highlighted his contributions to literature and his role in elevating Nigeria's global cultural standing. The rest of the stories, President Balatinubu has directed the Minister of Finance, Wali Edu, to present the cost implications for a new minimum wage within two days. Tinubu gave the order at a meeting with the government negotiation team, led by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akure, at the Presidential Villa in Abuja. Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, in an interview with correspondents at the closed door meeting, a shot of the president's readiness to accept the committee's resolutions. Idris said all hands will be on deck to present a new minimum wage for Nigeria in one week. The National Union of Electricity Employees, NUEE, says the national grid has been restored after the Nigerian Labour Congress and the Trade Union Congress suspended their strike. NUE National President Adebi Adeyi confirmed these newsmen, saying the greed has come back to normal. Adeyi also debunked the allegation that union leaders assaulted workers of the Transmission Company of Nigeria, adding that the union only withdrew its members in compliance with the directive of the organized labor. Representing Bauchi Central, Abdul Mengi, has resumed his legislative duties in the upper chamber after a three-month suspension. He was suspended in March over budget padding claims. Mengi was recalled on May 28 after a process was initiated by Deputy Minority Labour Leader Abba Muro, who expressed regret on behalf of the suspended lawmaker. He pledged to assume full responsibility for Mengi's actions, acknowledging the gravity of the suspension. President of the Senate, Gautula Pabio, announced the unconditional recall of Mingi after a brief plea by some lawmakers. Pabio emphasized the senator's resourcefulness and described him as a valued member of the Senate, adding that the decision to recall Mingi transcends re beyond religious and ethnic divides. State President Joe Biden has announced a sweeping new executive action aimed at curbing migrant arrivals at the U.S.-Mexico border. It will stop migrants who cross unlawfully from receiving asylum, but only takes effect when the southern border has been overwhelmed. The Biden administration says the action makes it easier for immigration officers to remove people who are in the U.S. illegally. The White House also says the action will pause when the number of migrants crossing the border slows to a safe and manageable level. Meanwhile, the Donald Trump's campaign team has criticized Biden's action, and a migrant advocate group flagged it will challenge the new policies in court. Immigration is one of the key voter issues ahead of the November's presidential election, and both Democrats and Republicans seeking to prove their credentials on the topic. And in sport, five players who were initially stranded in two different parts of the country as a result of the nationwide strike have arrived at the Super Eagles camp in Rio Akwaibo State. The family Sami Ajayi, 
Bright Osai Samuel, Calvin Bassi, alongside midfielder Franco Nyeka and forward Paul Onachu landed at the Victoria Ta International Airport. Will, afternoon aboard a private jet arranged by the Nigeria Football Federation. The arrival brought the tally of players and camp to 23, based to qualifying battle with the Bafana Bafana at the Gosu Lokwabio Stadium in Akwaibu, capital. Just before we go, speed through spot heels. Please do not drive beyond the specified speed limit. You can follow us and like all our various social media platforms. X, Traffic Radio 961. Instagram, Megas Traffic Radio 961. Subscribe and watch our news and programs live on YouTube, Traffic Radio 961. You can also visit our website, trafficradio961.ng. Did you know that Zolo administration injected 180 medium capacity buses for standard route? We can get more details on the Lagos State Government website. So the news have the highlights of the major stories. Lagos State Government has kicked off processes for the domestication of the National Women's Economic Empowerment we policy with a pledge to localize the policy to meet the unique needs of women across the state. President Balatunubu has directed the Minister of Finance, Wali Edu, to present the cost implications for a new minimum wage within two days. We also told you that United States President Joe Biden has announced a sweeping new executive action aimed at curbing migrant arrivals at the New Mexico Mexico border. And in sport, five players who were initially stranded in two different parts of the country as a result of the nationwide strike have arrived at the Super Eagles camp in New Aquaibum State. Send a message to info at trafficradio961.ng. That is the news broadcast compiled by Adewale Ulo Koroku. I am Sarah Adesoya. Thank you for listening and God bless you.